Hi, welcome back to my channel. And today we will be discussing how to attack out of nowhere. The position that you see uh, comes from a game that I played against Marat Jumayev, who is a grandmaster from Uzbekistan. Um, now, the whole game was quite suspicious. I mean, I did not play well. He played a dubious opening, but I let him equalize immediately. So uh, the whole game was quite dry and quite drawish, actually. And um, this is right after the time control. Uh, you know, I was under serious time pressure, so I was quite relieved to get out of time pressure and uh, have some time to uh, think and uh, play the position for real rather than, you know, rush and, you know, play on the increment. Uh, so this is a dry position, or at least it looks like a very dry position. Um, you know, both kings look quite safe. Um, and black will have this plan of playing rook to b4. Then, so rook b4, then black will play the move c4. You know, and after he exchanges the b-pawn for the c-pawn, the a-pawn will get counterplay, and the game will probably end in a draw. I mean, you know, black can probably play in a 96, try to play for 94. I mean, um, so really this is a very dry position. But uh, I would recommend you to pause the video and try to come up with the move that I made in the game. All right. In the game, F4 was played. Now I have a very basic idea in mind. First of all, uh, I want to play F5 and undermine the G6 pawn. Then I want to play E5 and E6 and undermine the king's position. So, so if F takes E. E, e6 and pawn takes g6 and you know the king will be quite weak uh queen rook and knight combo is quite dangerous especially with an open king so f4 is a very good move now i think he reacted correctly with this move rook b4 so um he is correctly evaluated the position and saw that, you know, he probably needs to create some sort of counterplay because this attack, um, this attack should uh, be defendable, definitely. But here's the thing. If you play aggressively, uh, a lot of the times your opponent might have one move that keeps equality. And if not that, if that move is not played, then he'll probably, probably be losing. So that is exactly what happened in this game. Uh, so uh, I continued with my plan of f5, and he continued with his plan of c4. So far, so good. I think uh, this is good play by both sides. And rook takes c4. Now, I would recommend you to pause the video again to see w where the queen should go. Uh, so I think that, but I think that the, the next move is quite obvious. It's uh, queen d3, because I want to keep the queen on the same diagonal as this king. And e5 and e6 can come in with more power because g6 will be under more pressure. And here, I think he made the decisive mistake of the game. He sh uh, played the move rook c6, but rook c5, I think, was the best move. And he thought it a while here. Um, so after the move rook c5, I was planning to play this move e5 to continue my attack. Rook takes e5, and I played the move f takes g6, um, or that's what I plan to play. And uh, now, um, if black plays f takes g6, he's losing here because I played rook takes e5, queen takes e5, and now this move queen d7 check. My knight's hanging on e2, but I can give the check first. So if king g8 or king h8, I take on d8 with check. And if queen g7, I take on d8, and my knight on e2 is not hanging anymore. However, um, black has this move king g7, which keeps balance in the position. Now, I was planning to make a move like rook to g3. But probably black could, mm, probably black can just play rook to g5, and he keeps equality. Yeah. But you see, I mean, the rook c5 concretely works, I think. But he makes a very natural-looking move rook c6. I mean... It's such an ordinary move. I mean, it looks like it cannot a move like just as ordinary as this cannot lose. I mean, the rook defends this rank, the sixth rank, which, you know, he supports the g6 pawn better. However, all of a sudden, 
I have some pressure on this position. Now I have a big threat of E6. So out of nowhere, after this move F4, I mean, I got uh, I, all of a sudden a great attack against him. So he took on F5. Um, I thought for maybe a little too long here. I, I, I think the next move is pretty obvious, just to take the pawn. I was thinking knight f4, with the idea of playing knight d5 and knight f6 immediately, but you, you know, what, what better time is there to take a pawn than, you know, with check and with him not defending it without any, you know, there are no complications here. I continue with my plan, and I think he, I think even my position is winning here, maybe. I mean, Look, if you, have, if you see a defense here, please leave it in the comments. I'll be very interested. I probably should analyze this a little bit more deeply. But um, he even played this awful move, queen b6. I thought queen a7 was a strong move in the game, and I did not know what to do. I mean, my calculation was knight d5, and then I thought I was winning here, except when I noticed this move, rook c3. And I was calculating all these lines, like queen f6 check, you know, taking the knight. But... Uh, I actually missed a very easy win in my calculations here in the game. I, I missed uh, this move queen f4, which uh, show which basically threatens h6 and protects the rook. So if you make a move like I don't know king h7 to diff well king h7 probably not, but king g king g7 in this position, then um, uh, I just play knight takes c3 to rook's hanging. I think the same thing goes for this move king h7. But I was thinking that maybe knight f6 could be strong against king h7. Whatever it is, I, I could take the rook at, at the very least. And on the move, uh, rook takes e3. This is nice. Um, I play queen takes h6 check, king g8 and knight f6. It's, it's nice made how this rook blocks the check. So um, uh, that that is... Uh, I was afraid of this defense, but actually it was a, he had a simple win. Also, I was getting... Uh, I was quite low on time here. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I, after the time control, I really did spend a lot of time thinking about this. Um, but this move queen b6 was very strange to me because you thought a very long time of, about this uh, move queen b6. So why not, if you want to pin the rook, why not do it on a7 because I get knight d5 and with a tempo. And, you know, I had like three minutes left and after this, he, after the, he thought, he had 22 before he made this move queen b6 and after he thought for such a long time, he ended up having about as much time as I did. So after this move knight d5, he played queen c5. And queen d7. So now I'm playing. My my threat is basically the queen d takes d8 with check. 96, and I blitzed out the move king h2. So king h2 basically frees my rook on e3. And I, I of course I calculated his next move. I, I his he played for one last trick. Otherwise I'm like taking on f7. His position just collapses. Line f4. I give queen e8 check, and you know king. G7 was played. Uh, if king h7, of course, I take on f7. So I'm going to just move king g7. I have this clever move, 97. And this is totally losing for already for black. I mean, it's force mate because um, the queen takes e3, runs into queen g8 mate. Um, and uh, so after this move, 97, he tried some desperation with this move of rook c8 and I played rook g3 and he resigned here. I mean, I can take the rook, but it's pretty because I actually have a forced checkmate. All right, so it's very interesting how out of nowhere, basically, I got such a killer attack against the grandmaster. I mean, with f4 and he makes this one ordinary move, rook c6, and he gets destroyed. You know, let's just throw it to the end. I mean, so uh, that um, that just goes to show like how dangerous attacks can be, and how you know if sometimes your opponent makes one tiny mistake, which you know makes a very attractive move, but you know it's a very attractive a move. It uh, it looks like it defends well, but if it's just a slight error, then it shows how he can go down very easily. So it's always good to be aggressive and. Uh, especially like 2,600 grandmasters, like professional chess players are amazing at, you know, finding these opportunities to get attacks out of nowhere. And um, it, it's, very, uh, it's very interesting to watch them and hopefully 
uh, both you and I could learn much more from them. I mean, I love the way how Rapport plays. Actually, I recently played against Rapport, and he uh, he destroyed me. I mean, I mean, uh, I made like a, one tiny mistake, one very ordinary looking move, and he destroyed me. I can show that later if you guys would like. I mean, uh, an amazing player Rapport is. I mean, just one of the most talented of all time. So. If you have any questions or if you have any other suggestions for any sort of defense that Black can provide, please share in the comments. Thanks.